Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago, as usual. And we've got good stuff today. We're going to kick it off with a soft sit. We're going to spend some more quality time with Judge Manning. And I've got what I what I think is a Karen. I, I, I think I've got a Karen. And that's got a new judge involved. So, uh, it, you know, it's, it's a lot of the fun stuff we like to we like to check out. So let's get her started, shall we? From the secret headquarters of the Sovereign Citizen Patrol, initiating video production sequence. We are no longer playing. So let's get revved up. It's time for Law Talk with Mike. The next three speakers are Louise Palomares, Logan Morton, and Roy Blickard. Logan Chase Morton. Hi. Good evening. Speak with you. Um, I just want to know what's going to be done for the uh, sovereign and indigenous uh, population of this uh, fine city um, in the face of oppressive um, personal um, tactics of harassment, of targeting, of gang stalking, of um, harassing and fettering. Okay, along with all the other nonsense, notice how he likes he likes to, to uh, poach the the victim status of indigenous people. It's it's disgusting. Uh, individuals who are disadvantaged out of this the the uh, the the society, if you will, um, through methods of, uh, of of targeting their vehicles, their private property, their uh, household goods that they're traveling to and from. Um, I'd like to know what's going to be done on behalf of the corruption in the uh, in, in in the ranks of uh, the sheriffs, the highway patrol, the EMTs, um, everyone that's a part of a, a gang stalking initiative. And by that he means law enforcement. I'd like to know what's going to be done on behalf of sovereign and indigenous people that they come and go freely and be left alone to do so in their their private property. I've been told twice. For each vehicle of mine, a private automobile, if you prefer, more accurately. Twice each, once on the way to court, taken out of my car, ripped out of my truck, put in cuffs, thrown in the back of a, of a car when I'm on the way to court, taken to jail, no crime committed, no corpus delicti, no damage, no threat. The only crime committed is that we don't have video of it. Threat, no, no, no uh, violence whatsoever. Citable, releasable, on site. Taken into custody repeatedly, errorously, uh, erroneously, errantly. Um, I'm tired of it. Lost my wife to sex trafficking, raped and sold into sex trafficking. All right. I'm a descendant of the founders of this country. I demand justice in Jesus name. Yeshua Messiah, Yahushua Hamashiach. The next two speakers. Mm -hmm. All right. That work? Yep. I'm going to go ahead and make you co-host now. Okay. Thank you. First of all, I want to uh, say thank you to, I think that's Bull Holbull. Holbo on that that sent me that clip. I actually stopped to look today. Um, and then this one is from Unpaid Troll and also Nas sent it to me. Thank you very much because I wouldn't have it otherwise. Thanks. <laughs> All right. All right. So we got uh Tra Traposa Weaver. President you on it. Anyway, we got Miss Cole here. Yep. Yeah. All right. We got two cases. All right, we got uh two two CP two one zero six zero five. The, 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 wait, what's my pen? Hold on. I'm sorry, what's the what's the position? I got a position. It's uh position sixteen and position uh one on the add-on calendar. Two one CP two one zero six zero five. Uh let's see, ninety days with a five thousand dollar bond on theft by shoplifting felony, theft by receiving stolen property felony, failure to yield right away of emergency vehicle. There's a five thousand dollar bond as of July the thirteenth. I just wanted to give some credit to uh to one end booth three uh, on the on the architecture of that hairstyle it's impressive then on position one on the add-on it's trafosa the one that we were two two cp two one zero six one six ninety two days as of july 13th there's a twenty six thousand two hundred fifty two hundred fifty dollar good bond robbing uh improper erratic lane change falling too closely possession of drug related objects driving on the wrong side of the road too fast for conditions Passing with insufficient clearance, DUI, under the influence of drugs, fleeing and attempting to elude, reckless driving, improper U-turn, possession of marijuana, less than out, seatbelt violation, driving, failure to signal, lane change, or turn. Trial. <laughs> she, uh, she just went to trial that time. I didn't hear her pray. 
But here, here we are. You'll see that you'll see the problem if you haven't seen it yet. In prior arrests, two FTAs, twenty seventeen and eighteen um, felonies, two thousand thirteen forgery, and a CWAT SB twenty eighteen. Nothing further. All right, I'm on the position one. I don't. That's a split because there's one, two, three, four. UJR through the jail. Go ahead, Miss Cole. Yes, Your Honor. I did send the district attorney and yourself an email on this case. Um, regarding just for judicial efficiency, it's a false identification case. I received body cam footage um, that shows that my client was not the one on that was arrested on these charges. Um, the defendant on this case was taken to Grady Hospital and the police left Grady Hospital and then served the warrant on my client about a week later. Um, I have been in communication with uh, ADA White about it, so I'm not he I thought he was going to be here tonight. Um, but I do not see him. I can go through the bond factors, Your Honor. But so, um, so, so, so just tell me one thing: mm -hmm. if she wasn't the one driving and doing this, are you saying that the person at Grady gave them her name? Yes, Your Honor. It's my understanding that she had the ID of my client, and she provided that name. And you can hear her on the um, body cam footage providing my client's name. However, the tattoos that she has do not line up with. My client does not have any tattoos on her legs or behind her ears. Um, and I, I, I want to tip my cap to uh, Amy Cole, who's the defense attorney here. You'll see the situation. She thinks her client, uh, somebody gave her name, and she absolutely shouldn't be in jail. And that appears to be the case. However, however, she doesn't come in like, like a maniac. She handles this... Uh, very, very deftly, which you have to, because everyone needs to be convinced. You can't just be cutting people loose because someone someone uh, said something. You, you need verification on that. She's very cool in the way she handles it. Really progresses her client's situation. I did send the the body cam footage as well as the timestamps on that um, to the district attorney as well as to yourself. Uh, I can't go through the bond factors, but my request today was to set it down for a UJR jail while the um, ADA has time to process the case and fully investigate it, um, but it is clearly not my client on the body cam footage. It doesn't so, look like her or sound like her, as well as the tattoos. So before you do, do you want to send it to uh, Ms. Nix? Because obviously Mr. White's not here. And sure. See, that calm demeanor already has Judge Manning leaning for her. And instead of coming in all histrionic and crazy, she's she can she's just, she probably knows the attorney and the, the attorney's very calm like this. This just isn't my person. And right away, Judge Manning's thinking probably isn't. But let's verify. I can do that. There's not going to be a whole lot that I can do in the middle of this hearing to oh. confirm your um and so let me see if I can get in touch with Mr. Mr. White to see if he has uh, made any progress. Um, I'm going to stop my video and, and send him a, a message real quick. And I apologize, Your Honor. I was corresponding with ADA White prior to this hearing, and I thought he would be here. Yeah, I never know when he's going to or not. Uh, Ms. Thomas, uh, Ms. Collins already handled your case, so you can go ahead and leave. She's just got, she's going to uh, call you and get with you, okay? All right. Thank you so much. Gratuitous triple reference. I like it. <laughs> it's my chat. <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> All right. So why don't you go ahead on the bond argument, and then if we have to circle back around, we can, but at least we can push this one out of the way. So go ahead for... Uh, 16 and uh, the add-on. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Miss Weaver is 30 years old. She's lived in Georgia her whole life. Um, she does have a stable address. I believe it's the address provided on her booking sheet. She's been there um, for several years, and she lives there with family, her mother, um, and her child. She does have a child who is 10 years old. Um, she has her GED as well as her medical assistant certification from Brown Mackey. Um, she was employed at the Dollar Tree. Um, in West End prior to her arrest. Um, she may not have that job anymore, but thinks she may be able to get it back and can reach back out. Um, Your Honor, I believe the last forger, the last felony charge was the forgery um, from about 10 years ago when she was 19 years old. Um, 
no open cases or and she's not currently on probation. Again, Your Honor, we do have a strong case of false identification on this since she can be cleared. Even this, she's laying it out. Her client does have a record. She did forgery, but it was 10 years ago. No no um, uh, law enforcement contact in between. That's pretty good. And she's got about, about a 10-year-old kid. It, it, that paints the picture of someone who cleaned it up. It, re it really does. And she just lays it out there very calmly. By body cam footage that has been provided to the state. She does wish to clear her name. She's not a risk to not appear for court. I'm not a risk to reoffend, as this was not her that um, committed these charges. She's already spent 92 days in jail with no hearing or indictment. So this is her first chance to come over the court since first appearance. Um, and we just received the body cam footage today. So I would request, um, oh, Your Honor, the booking photos also don't show her the tattoo behind her ear, which the police discuss in the body cam footage. And I did send the timestamp for that discussion as well. Um, we are asking for a UJR jail on this case so that she can be released and get um, right. employment back and get back to her life um, while the DA investigates the false identification and hopefully proceeds with a null process or a dismissal. Um, Your Honor, that, that would be our request today. And on the uh, position 16, that's the felony shoplifting, theft property, and stolen property. Yes, Your Honor, it is two case numbers. However, it was one consecutive event. Um, the defendant robbed from a public store, jumped in a stolen vehicle, and it ended in a police pursuit, which ended in a car accident, and the defendant being transported to Grady. Um, the defendant in that case actually had a broken leg, Your Honor, I believe, and had a cast put on their leg at Grady Hospital, and my client was arrested and had no injuries or cast or anything else. Um, so this is just one of those cases where the fa a false name was given. My client was implicated by that false name, and she's been in jail for three months because of it. So right. that's why we're asking for UJR jail, Your Honor. Go ahead, Ms. Nix. Um, Judge, I have sent um, ADA White in a text message. He hasn't gotten back to me uh, as to whether he has looked into this um, out, uh, issue. Um, but based on the defendant's history, her history of F FTA, <laughs> and the sheer number of charges, um, I think a... $5,000 bond and then a $26,000 bond is reasonable in this case. The first time I saw this, I thought Nix is a little over the top and I, well, I still do. I, I, if I'm, if I'm sitting in the prosecutor seat right now, she doesn't know this case and she doesn't want to be the one like, Oh yeah, okay. I believe it, but I don't have any proof. <laughs> so I understand that I would just step back and say, judge, I'm not familiar with the case. I leave it to the discretion of the court in this circumstance. But she she affirmatively asks to to keep the bond as is. All right. So uh, the video um, is, is he? Do you take whether or not he's even looked at it? Yes, Your Honor. He called me this afternoon and he told me that he has reviewed the footage and he did look at the timestamp portions, but he didn't understand why the police would have dropped the defendant off at Grady Hospital and left her there. Um, and he said that that was not what he understood happens. Um, however, when you read the police report, the, the incident report literally states that she was transported to Grady Hospital, and it says nothing about when they picked it up. The warrants were served on my client at her home, and she had no idea what they were for when she was arrested um, prior to first appearance when it was all laid out for her. All right. Um, he said he had to investigate that issue because it was not what yeah. he understood, but there was no arguments against the body cam footage. From him from what i heard all right all right yeah. let's see on uh position 16 let's see it's already at uh 2500 so we'll make that a thousand we'll make position uh count to a thousand number three is ujr jail uh no drugs unless prescribed no alcohol no weapons stay away from all public grocery stores stay away from 3695 cascade road no further contact with anthony parks and what we'll do is if you can get in touch with him that's judge for, I, I actually believe the defense attorney, but I'm not sure yet. I don't have it verified. And I don't want to look like the jerk who just let somebody out of jail before I had verification. So I'll just, I'll just move it on down and, and say I'm open to change it is if, if uh, attorney White gets on board and shows it to me. And he can jump on here and tell you what's happened before the end of, obviously we can amend that. Uh, let's see, on position one on the add-on, uh, uh 100 count one count two 100 100 count three 200 
Count four, 200, count five. Count six, 250. Count seven, <laughs> 1,000. Count eight, 5,000. Count nine, 500. Then 10, 11, 12, and 13 are all UJR gel. 100, 100, 100, 200, 200, 250, 1,000, 5,000, 500, and then last three, four UJR gel. And your honor, I understand that you have made your ruling. I will just yes, get, get out of Fulton County. I don't care if it was you or not. Just get out. <laughs> say that my client has had has no income and hasn't for ninety days because she's been incarcerated on false charges, and she is willing to have a deputy investigate and look at the the appearance of where the tattoos should be based on the body cam footage and verify that they're not there. Um, if there's anything we can do in this case, other than I mean, Miss. ADA White did tell me that he was he should be here. He communicated me with, with me this afternoon. I just really feel for my client who sat there for 90 days. No, with. And I do too. Um, so there's no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons on there. So we'll let this stand right here. But I don't know, Miss Nick, if you can have if Miss Cole, if you'll give Miss Nick your phone number, maybe uh, White can call your phone while we pause and take care of uh, Marietta Annex. I will, Your Honor. Thank you. That's what we can do. Okay. All right, let's see. Uh, Michael Bennett. Bennett. Yes. Before you say so South Annex, if you could check out uh, Miss, while we're doing this, Miss Weaver. Uh, roughly in half to 30,000. All right, stand by, uh, Miss Nick. So, South Annex, if you could check out uh, Miss, while we're doing this, Miss Weaver. They, they do. Bottom, right, since she has right. a uh, tattoo behind either of her ears. <laughs> do you mind, Deputy? Thank you, Deputy. You're the best. No, no tattoos behind her ears. Thank you. No, yeah, no tattoos, Mr. White. I don't, I don't know if the tattoos were described in a warrant or in the report, but I mean, that's obviously a big factor. Um, Judge, I'll be um, preparing a decline. Um. <laughs> On both cases, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how um, we're going to do this. I won't get it done tonight. I'm going to have to talk to our so case intake Mike, people because why don't I do why don't I do UJR jail? Okay, that, so that, that would be get, great. So that she can get out, and then uh, Miss Cole can reach out to you as far as like declining to prosecute or what have you. Well, yeah, because I mean we have someone who. Well, he's saying when it, it, it's, I got the question there, it, it, a decline would be declining to prosecute. So, so he, he he's he's saying I can do this. However, right, right here he says there's somebody else with a very similar birth date and the same name, and I'm not sure. And he doesn't want he doesn't want to mess up that case, which is all understandable. At the same time, his heart's in the right place. He's like, get him out of jail, please. Even as the prosecutor, I don't. You know, I'm I'm. That's why he led with, I, I'm going to be preparing a decline on this, but he has to be careful about how he does it, how he does it, because he doesn't want to let somebody else who actually is guilty off be, because they're, because somebody gave a false ID here. Um, we believe has the same name and um, is within a one year and age of this Trifosa Weaver, who in fact... Um, did commit these offenses so okay it's those where we have just we've got the right name but apparently the wrong individual okay so but, um yeah so ujr jail would be would be fantastic for this particular defendant judge okay so person. i'll do that on both cases uh you got that metal clerk I actually don't know what UJR jail means, whatever. I'm taking it as a euphemism for let her out of jail while we sort it out, which which appears to be what's happening. I got it. Okay, so that's right. 16 and 1. So that way, ma'am, you'll get out. But make sure when you get out, you reach out to Miss Cole, okay? Yes, thank you. Thank you, All South right. Annex. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. That concludes okay. my business, baby. Excused. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. All right, thank go you. ahead and speak on Mr. Reed. Oscar says, hit like and subscribe. Well, and hit the bell notification. Thanks, Oscar. I that. Um, all right. This is file 22F5. 
Okay, this is a new one. This is Magistrate, uh, Magistrate Garwood, Tamara Garwood. She was on uh, Magistrate Fink's call. I came across this, and this is more in the interesting category. This is one where I put que Karen question mark. She behaves herself during this hearing, but she does one thing that that is so over the line and entitled in my estimation, or at least is alleged to have done one thing. And we'll discuss it as we go. Dash 5148. Tell me your full and complete name for the record, please. Kelsey Lee Mead. Thank you. Good afternoon to you. I'm Magistrate Garwood. I'm going to be handling your case today. Ms. Mead, did you have a chance to speak with the public defender regarding representation in this matter? Yes, I did. And when you spoke with the public defender, you gave them your current, you didn't give them all of your current contact information. You gave an at, uh, gave a telephone number and an email and indicated you would update. Is that correct? Yes, um, I do have an address, my sister's place in Belleville that I can uh, stay at, but um, I'm not quite sure her exact uh, address, so I can update that. Okay, so upon your release, you'll have to notify the court and certainly you'll want to make the public defender aware of that as well, okay? okay. All right, give me just one second because now my computer's angry. All right, um, so I will advise you of your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you can't afford an attorney, the court will refer you to the local appointing authority. I will appoint the public defender to assist you today, and then I'll make that referral to the local appointing authority. You have the right to a probable cause conference within 14 days of today, a preliminary examination within 21 days, and you also have the right to a trial. Do you understand your rights as I've explained them to you? Yes. Very good. We'll proceed then with appearances by counsel, starting with the people. Gabrielle O'Connor on behalf of the people. Good afternoon, again. <laughs> Silvana Reed, Assistant Public Defender with and on behalf of Ms. Mead. Good afternoon, 12 times is a charm. Ms. Reed, would you like me to read the complaint or do you waive formal reading? We did review that complaint, so we will waive a formal reading and stand mute. Okay, so Ms. Mead, that means I'm not going to go through the details of the charges with you because... You oh, that's a bummer. I want to see these, but we might see them coming up on another day. You'll see. You have had a chance to review that information. I appreciate, appreciate you briefly, but you've had a chance to review that information with Ms. Reed. She's indicated that you are going to stand mute. That means you'll remain silent as to the charges. Uh, there are three of them. And... Uh, I will enter a plea of not guilty on your behalf. I'm going to schedule you for your next court date. That will be a probable cause conference. That will be in front of Judge Simpson through the 14A1 District Court. Please. Oh, Lord. Oh. Cut, the camera. <laughs> Cut that camera. On October 20th at 9 a.m. or as soon thereafter as you can be seen, that will be by Zoom. We'll get you a notice to appear. You'll get additional information from the Public Defender's Office. If for some reason you remain in custody at the jail, the jail will assist you so you can participate. You understand? I do. Very good. The next thing we'll need to address is bond. There are two parts to bond. Bond conditions. Those are things the court tells you you can and cannot do. If you violate a bond condition, you're subject to immediate arrest. The other side of bond is whether you can be released today on your own or whether you'd have to post a bond in order to be released. Before I make any decisions regarding bond or bond conditions, I did hear testimony regarding what allegedly took place on the day in question. Um, I heard that. I, I was hoping she would tell me that. I'm guessing it's sort of a DV thing. I don't know. That's speculation on my part. Um, but she's charged with, with three things here, and you'll get, you'll get a little insight from the prosecutor. Uh, as we go from the Ann Arbor police detective. Um, I also have a written request from law enforcement in the prosecutor's office. I will hear from the prosecutor if she wishes to supplement her written request. And I'll also hear from Ms. Reed. Ms. O'Connor, would you like to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. Very briefly, um, the people are, are requesting um, no contact with the victim, Michael Benoit, um, a no-go order, no um no go order to um, with a GPS tether for that address. Um, there is an allegation that uh, Mr. Benoit asked uh, the defendant to leave and she refused stating squatters rights. That right there, that sent a shiver down my spine. 
I think that this is his, I think it's a relationship or a girlfriend because they're living together. He asked her to leave, which makes it seem to me that it's his place. Her response is, I have squatter's rights. If that doesn't make any young man run in terror at the thought of a relationship, I don't know what would. Like, like if it's not going well, you, you, you can't leave. You, you now owe her a place. I, I think that's what we're dealing with. I'm not sure. I might be reading too much into it, but uh, it just gives me a creepy vibe like you wouldn't believe. Like I said, she seems very uh, – the, this woman seems very reasonable during this hearing. She doesn't do anything. But that right there just – woo. Thank you. Ms. Reed? Yes, thank you. We did review that bond recommendation form as well, and we noted that there is no cash component being requested by the prosecutor's office. So we would like to ask for a personal bond in this matter. We did also discuss the no contact and no go to requested provisions. And as noted, she is planning on living with her sister and just needs to confirm that address. Um, so she is definitely willing to comply. I did explain how she could conduct a civil standby as well to retrieve her belongings um, from the no go to address. And after that, she is willing to again comply with those provisions. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go through your conditions with you first. These are not in the order of importance. They're just in the order listed on the form I'm going to read from. And all of these conditions will exist whether you're in custody or out of custody. Uh, you are not to use, purchase, or possess alcohol, illegal drugs, or marijuana. Do you understand? Yes. You will be required to report to our... That is my other guess. All wild speculation. I don't know anything. These are just standard conditions, so it maybe doesn't have anything to do with it. But it... it it feels to me, tell me if I'm wrong, it feels to me like a drunken rage scenario because this woman is completely in control of herself in court and being quite rational and reasonable. But I can just see her, her just tying one on and and going crazy because whatever, she picked up three charges and, and asserted squatter's rights. That's That's a bad day. Community Corrections Department for standard supervision. You'll have to go to that for drug and alcohol testing. You'll have to go to them within 24 hours, business hours of your release from jail to get it set up for that testing. There's $12 fee and you'll have to bring photo ID. Do you understand? Yes. Failure to appear may result in warrant for your arrest. You're not allowed to leave the state of Michigan without prior permission of the court. Do you understand? Yes. Your sister lives in state, correct? Yes. And did you say Belleville? Belleville, yes. So okay, I wasn't sure if I heard Belleville or Toledo. Belleville's fine. Um, you are not to purchase or possess any firearms, ammunition, or dangerous weapons. Do you understand? Yes. How many firearms do you own? None. You are not to assault, terrorize, frighten, intimidate, threaten, harass, molest, or stalk anyone. Do you understand? Yes. You are to have no contact with Michael. Benoit or Benoit, B-E-N-O-I-T. When I say no contact, no direct or indirect contact with the above named individual in person or through others. No telephone, email, texting, internet and or social media. No Skype, no Zoom, no FaceTime, no Facebook, no Slack and all the other things that I'm forgetting. No contact means no contact. Do you understand? Yes. I do. You cannot attempt to have contact with him and you can't direct others to be in contact with him on your behalf. Do you understand? I do. You are not to go to anywhere. It doesn't, any apartment. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Is that an apartment complex or just a building? Um, it's a complex. Okay. So I don't want you anywhere in that complex. You understand? I do. Yes. And it's your intention to... See, that's even worse. It's, a co it's an apartment complex, meaning the guy doesn't own it. He's got a lease on an apartment. And she's saying, despite the fact that we're not getting along, you have to leave your apartment. It's now my apartment. No, of course I'm not paying for it. <laughs> because if it was her apartment, she would she would try to evict him, or he would have gotten pulled out of there. I guarantee it. I would. I guarantee it. The the only factual scenario that makes that line up is that she's she is now asserting that she's got more rights to his apartment than him. That's where we're at. Return to the property with a civil standby. Is that correct? Yes. So you'll be allowed to go there once with the civil standby. You would contact the Ann Arbor Police Department. You would make an appointment with them to go to that property. You would wait for them to arrive, not on the front stoop, Thank but you. in your car, quietly and peacefully. 
They will be there to keep the peace themselves. They're not going to resolve disputes over property. They are not going to help you carry things. That is just an opportunity for you to get your things and move along. That is also not an opportunity. By the way, I also like uh, Tamara. She she's new here, but she's uh, she's uh, mighty skeptical about uh, about this defendant's behavior. She's like nice, she's professional, but she's not giving her a lot of leeway about uh, about the conditions and so forth. Opportunity for you to have contact with Michael. Do you understand? I do. I'm going to require you to have a GPS tether placed. Um, right now it is. 308. I do not know if you will be able to get over to have that placed tonight prior to your release. And it is not a risk I'm willing to take. So if right there, I mean she couldn't be more explicit. Placement of that tenor that tether is a higher priority than you getting out today. I I, I don't mind if you get out today, but but the tether is more important as far as I'm concerned. If you can be released in time for that to be placed today, then you can be released tonight. If it cannot be placed today, then you can be released tomorrow after it is placed. They close at 4.30 and it's 3.09 now. So I have no idea if the jail can get you over there. But the bottom line is the GPS tether has to be placed prior to your release. <laughs> You're not to violate any criminal law. You're required to appear for any and all court hearings and other places as directed by the court. All of your conditions exist, whether you're in custody or out of custody. You are required to notify the court of your address once you confirm that. You are not to go to any place of employment. If Mr. Benoit moves, you're not to go to his home. Um, any place of his employment, if he's in school, you're not to go to his place of education. And if he regularly attends a house of worship, you're not to go there. Do you understand your bond conditions? I do. With the GPS tether, I am going to release you. I'm pretty uneasy about releasing you only with the GPS tether. So I'm going to set a backup cash bond of $15,000. So if something goes awry, that's the minimum bond that you're going to face. Okay. Squatting rights do not give you any right to go to this property beyond that civil standby. There's no reason beyond the civil standby for you to be at that property. Do you understand? I do. You don't have any children in common with Michael, correct? No. Do you have any uh. pets in common with Michael? Um, my cat is living there, um, but oh, good Lord. I, where's my sweet Jesus? Uh, I believe that my sister, cause he was taking medicine. My sister was giving him medicine when we were working. Um, so I believe that she's probably taking care of that cat. Yeah. Okay. Going there to get your cats on a separate, I'm not ordering cat parenting time or visitation or anything like that you're staying away do you understand judge come on a reasonable cat sharing schedule here i i think i think it's your duty i do, do you have <laughs> any questions for me no uh, ms o'connor is there anything else we need to address in this matter no your honor all right ms reed anything else we need to address in this matter no, that is all. Okay. Then you, did you have any more questions for me? Um, I, I was just wondering, do I tell somebody about the GPS? I will tell them and they will know. They'll get an order. And again, they're going to do their best. There are probably other people in line in front of you and they're going to process everybody in their normal fashion. So if you end up staying for a night, that's how it, it works, okay? All right, you are all set, you can stand up. Can you let um, a jail staff member, can you tell them to come in when you leave? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, uh, well, there you have it. That, that was a, a short but wild ride. We, we got a soft sit, we've got uh, a false ID, 
which uh, Judge Manning got to the bottom of pretty quick, but she needed the prosecutor to come back and sort of verify the, verify the situation. And I was wondering about the last one. I just thought that was interesting, but you guys were uh, you guys were cracking me up with that. <laughs> you came through. Ah, I felt like I'd been cocktailing, but I hadn't. I hadn't. It's midday, and I got a bunch of stuff to do. In fact, I, I, I got a scoop. But thank you all for coming out, and I will see you soon.